वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल बाल विज्ञान भारती एंड दिस इज योर मेंटर अविलास सरकार एज यू नो दैट इन लास्ट एपिसोड इन द चैप्टर आई हैव कम्प्लीटेड द थियोरी पार्ट ऑफ क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट बिफोर दैन दैट आई हैव कवर्ड ऑलरेडी द डॉट प्रोडक्ट एंड द प्रॉब्लम रिलेटेड टू दैट आई हैव आई डिड कम्प्लीटेड द क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट नाउ इन दिस चैप्टर इनिशियली आई स्टार्ट विद द प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग ऑन क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट फर्स्ट then i will take up another subject that that will be very short uh, uh, subject and uh, probably i will solve one or two so, uh, problem on that okay so let me start with the problem solving problem solving on cross product okay so let me read out the first one the example one says calculate the cross product between vector a given by 3 minus 3 1 and b 4 9 and 2 this is a very straight forward uh, uh, question so the solution will be also be straight forward if you remember in the last chapter what we did we have uh, ultimately calculate the cross product of this can be represented in the form of a matrix and how that matrix has to be calculated that i have shown so it will be very easy if you can remember that form because the the letter part of it if i come from that to this that will be very difficult to remember the orientation which was coming coming first which was which will come later and this way and where the sign is changing Uh, if i re- can remember this orientation because this is a very straight forward i j k in that equation and the component of a a1 a2 a3 and this is b1 b2 b3 and accordingly if you assume that this is a and b then what is your a1 a1 this is on a1 this is a2 this is a3 similarly b1 b2 b3 so now it is very easy to write a cross b in this form first So what I will write i j k, and that a one is three minus three one. This is four nine two. Now uh, the thing that has to be practiced to remember it for one or two time at least is that how will you expand this matrix? So to expand this matrix, I have told I will write it on the top part. So let me follow this. i will be there along with that when i'll put i i will blind this part and always this will come downward from the left corner and the next the minus from the right corner so minus 3 into 2 this will be minus 6 minus will be there automatically will come and the result this into this will be 9 in the next part where that y part that uh, unit vector of y will come i automatically will put a minus because plus then minus that will accommodate with the j j i need not to i, I will put j now when i'll put now i'll rub it it out the, for the next part this is 2 now when i will put j j and this part i will hide it, hide with my uh means automatically you can hide it when you will practice more and need not to put hands on that but thing is that that what part which will be in the calculation is the remaining part which is not being hided so this is again follow the same rule from the left up corner to the right and this so this is 3 into 2 6 minus 1 into 4 4 This part is over. Next part again plus plus minus plus. This equals you have to remember and k. This part is okay. Then 
रब इट आउट रब इट आउट ना के ओके हाइट द अदर पार्ट ओनली थिंग यू कैन यू कैन वॉच इट इज दिस 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 सो अगेन दिस इन टू दिस माइनस दिस इन टू दिस ओरिएंटेशन ऑलो इज द सेम थ्री इन टू नाइन ट्वेंटी सेवन माइनस माइनस एंड हेयर ऑल्सो एज माइनस इज देयर माइनस थ्री इंटू फोर माइनस ट्वेल्व एंड दिस माइनस टूगेदर विल गिव यू प्लस देन इट इज सो दिस इज ओवर नाउ दिस इज द अल्टीमेट रिजल्ट वन यू एक्सपर्ट द मैट्रिक्स दिस इज द रिजल्ट नाउ द रिजल्ट विल सो माइनस सिक्स माइनस नाइन दैट इज माइनस फिफ्टीन आई विल फॉलो देयर एज ए यूनिट फैक्टर अलॉन्ग एक्स फॉर सिक्स माइनस फोर टू जे आई विल नॉट राइट इट यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दिस इज एंड द लास्ट वन ट्वेंटी सेवन इन टू ट्वेल्व थर्टी नाइन के सो दिस विल बी द रेजल्ट इन वेक्टर ऑफ इफ आई से इट इज रेजल्ट इन वेक्टर आर ऑफ ए क्रॉस बी सो कैलकुलेट द क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट द क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट इज ऑल्सो ए वैक्टर यू नो सो दिस इज द एंसर for the cross product of this a and b understood i'll move on to the next problem problem 2 okay problem 2 says Calculate the area. Now, calculate the area of the parallelogram. Parallelogram. Okay. Spanned by the vectors a given by three comma three comma one and the vector b. Now you see that vector in the earlier problem also same as this one. Okay, the magnitude and the elements are given the same. Only thing is in this case we have to calculate the area of a parallelogram spanned by this vector. What does it mean? Now, if I draw a parallelogram of this kind, okay. now parallelogram may be this one or may be a straight one that depends but i can take it as a general form now this is spanned some area this parallelogram and parallelogram is formed by what by these vectors then only this vector will span some area as a parallelogram now if you assume this is a this is b so this when will when it is completed will form a parallelogram and the area you have to find now how do you find this area now if i draw the now i am i am talking about the geometry just forget for some time about the vector and all that if we draw the diagonal and this will divide it into two equal triangle what is the area of this triangle if i draw a imaginary perpendicular to the extension it will meet at point let's say l then the, this is equal triangle if i can able to find the area of this one triangle i can find the if i multiply the two you will get the area of the parallelogram now what is the angle uh, what is the area now let's say uh, i'm naming it okay now this area is nothing but half into base 
dash means ob this is vector into the height height i will take the perpendicular height not this height this is the height now i will take the height is cl now what is your cl if if you assume this is theta the angle between this vectors so this will also be theta now cl is what now if i this is the area of that tri the uh, triangle o uh, this triangle o cb okay now this is again equal to ob into cl means this sin of cl means what if i take this triangle now cl by cb will give you sin theta so cl means cb sin theta so cb sin theta now what is this part this is nothing but the cross product of ob and cb is equal to your oa i can write or let me take another step further so that you will understand it better so i'll rub it out for some time uh, only thing is that i have to remember the coordinates a is 3 minus 3 1 b is 4 9 and 2 isn't it yes so this you will remember now i put this thing here again now i will write it is ob into cb is equal to oa because this is parallelogram and this opposite sides are equal so i can put it oa and the remaining is sin theta okay now half into ob means as a vector b okay and oa is the vector uh, a now this ob is the length only i am not talking about the direction so i can put the magnitude of a and magnitude of b and this also magnitude of a followed by a sin theta the theta is the angle between that this is the sin of that so this is nothing but what b cross a the cross product of this this is generalized formula i am establishing then after it can be used directly in a sum so this 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 triangle the area is half of b cross a now what would be the area of this parallelogram a o a c b it will be twice of this triangle o c b this is nothing but b cross a so ultimately that the vectors that is forming a parallelogram the area span between that would be the cross product of b cross a okay now i am talking about the magnitude because span is all the magnitude not the direction so i can take it as the mod value only i am not talking about the sign or direction because that will give me a freedom to write a cross b or b cross a magnitude wise b cross a and a cross b are same but direction wise they are different so i am not worried about the direction because i need the area only so area will be given by the magnitude only so i will only confine myself with the magnitude so b cross a now as you understand the the area formed by the two vectors of a uh, which forming a parallelogram the area is b cross a now thing will be easier for you so now will, what is the value of b cross a the uh, value of b cross a or a cross b magnitude wise i can write is b cross a is given by this matrix that i have solved earlier k a1 a2 a3 b1 b2 b3 now you know what is a1 3 this is minus 3 this is 1 as because i did it in the earlier case i will not going to solve it so you know the value of it after solving this i will get something minus 15i uh, plus 
सॉरी माइनस टू के प्लस थर्टी नाइन सॉरी माइनस टू जे थर्टी नाइन के दिस वॉज द रिजल्ट ऑफ ए क्रॉस बाई फॉर अर्लियर केस एज बिकॉज द एलिमेंट्स आर सेम आई विल गेट द सेम नाउ वॉट इज द मॉड वैल्यू ऑफ दैट मॉड वैल्यू विल बी नॉट दिस पार्ट दिस इज द ए क्रॉस बी वैल्यू ओके नाउ फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग एज वॉट इज द एक्सैक्ट वैल्यू ऑफ ए क्रॉस बी दिस केस दिस विल कम कम विद द डिरेक्शन बिकॉज इट इज कंटेनिंग द यूनिट वेक्टर्स अलॉन्ग थ्री डिरेक्शन सो ए क्रॉस बी इज दिस नाउ आई नीड टू फाइंड मॉड वैल्यू ऑफ दैट नाउ इफ आई वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट मॉड वैल्यू देन मॉड वैल्यू विल बी वॉट इज दैट द स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ this square that we have learned in case of any vector the magnitude of any vector it is that easy so magnitude of this ultimately will give you some vector na this will give some vector this one now magnitude of any vector is the square root of the coefficient square sum of the coefficient square so whatever be the result it will be the answer okay so let me check any other variety is there not otherwise i'll move to the next subject okay so same okay that's it now i'll move to the next subject the subject called is called is projectile this is very short subject i will explain projectile the simply the projectile is is the motion i already told you in in, in other classes also the projectile is the motion against gravity this is the simplest definition one could one can say about the projectile how it is so let me understand the projectile when it is only against the gravity that means there is no other force is acting apart from the gravity so we will our consideration is consideration is we will not consider any other force in 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 that system in the system where we will study projectile so this is the assumption or the ideal condition that will take to consider a projectile motion because purely if you want to study the projectile initially you have to aloof or you have to separate all other factors that may influence the projectile so once i can purely study the projectile then after any any things which is being added will be added and that can be considered as a whole and then the study will be different but to study as as a purely the projectile i have to consider this i have to take this ideal condition where no other force uh, in terms of in terms of uh, air resistance or or friction will be considered so this we we are taking as a uh, uh, condition that there is no other resistance due to air or friction will be uh, will be um, uh, uh, there okay so now if it is so the projectile of a body is initiated when there is a flight of any object there is a flight if i 
can consider a two dimensional projectile i am not going to the three dimensional i make it very easy and i will consider the two dimensional projectile motion this is the simplest one where projectile when the the motion of a body will form a trajectory or a or a path of motion which will be something like this okay that means they will start a motion uh against the gravity that means it has been thrown up into the air by a initial impact force or impulsive force rather it is a you can say the impulse force because the initial force which will exist for a fraction of second but the amount of force is very huge so the the effect of force we cannot cons we cannot consider uh, to uh, we cannot calculate with respect to the time it is a very huge force that is being applied for a shorter very microsecond and that is comes under the impulse force so that when i will give a impulse force a body and it has been flight into the air it is it is being thrown into the air then after the instant i will release the force that will be very for a very small time the force will be applied so that will not take part in the motion only function of this impulse force to give a initial velocity this this uh, this force will create initial velocity okay so with that it being projected or being thrown into the air and do and then after the motion only governed only governed by the gravitational force gravitational force so there in the path of that project uh, of this motion the only force that will exist is the gravitational force that means the earth's attraction force okay this is the first condition to analyze any projectile motion so what is projectile actually the projectile is the body which is being consider consider as the object which is studied which is studied so the projectile is the body on which the motion has been created and which is being thrown up the air so the object itself is called the projectile so object object is equal to the projectile and the path is called the trajectory project so this is the uh, elements of the motion now it has been thrown with a initial velocity let's say this is v0 i am taking but then after every point so this is the velocity at this point of starting of the motion that means at zero you can say if i consider that at starting of the motion is being taken as the origin of motion and if i divide it in y and x axis if i break into component every time so in every instant of time the velocity is different from this initial velocity this is the only variation then, then after in that projectile everywhere the velocity is v here it is v there it is v and at the extreme because in that path there is no other force is acting and it is only governed by the gravitational force but here is interesting thing is that the gravitational force always acting downward so there is no force which is governed horizontally only the gravitational force which is which is acting downward will will affect the motion or affect the uh, thing to move downwards only only the that is the only the perpendicular 
motion will, will, um, will being affected so only the vertical motion whatever it is happening or whatever, vertical displacement whatever it is happening this is only by this vertical force that is called the gravitational force of the body for the horizontal movement there is no force is acting so at the time of the uh, uh, the the motion starts if the force is f okay so as we will not talk about the force because this is we are talking about the kinetic matrix but to understand that the force is applied initially then after this gravity so whatever the force which is which is helping to climb a height will be governed by this gravitational force for this motion there is no force is being acted that is only governed by the initial impulse being given so you can understand this direction there is no force acting from the start of the motion to the end of the motion so in this direction as there is no force we can understand the x direction the velocity velocity e is constant and the y direction there is acceleration is happening so this concept we can we can accept because in the in between this motion there is no extra force only that vertical motion because we know two vectors if are if it is perpendicular each other they will not affect each other they will not even disturb each other not support each other they are acting differently vertical force will act to move vertically up and down horizontal force if any that will only help to move horizontally but as because you can see that there is no force acting in that projectile the there is no change in velocity the velocity it has started here it will end up here okay so these are the exam uh, this is the uh, means condition on which the projectile will be studied so vertical motion as it is governed by a force there must there definitely be change in velocity change in velocity we call it the acceleration so in vertical motion there will be acceleration in the horizontal motion so there is no acceleration so if i want to write the uh, uh, the equation in the horizontal direction so if it is if i if i assume it is a vx the component of the velocity i am not going to the details of that and if it is va vy so initial is will be vy0 it will be vx0 now vx0 will be constant there so that if i say the the ultimate velocity of that the final velocity will be vx0 the initial or, or uh, yes in the x direction the or rather i will write it vx final is equal to vx zero means initial velocity that will be case of horizontal motion horizontal motion and as this this uh, velocity is a vector this also acceleration velocity vector and those are acting 90 degree apart they will not affect each other okay only thing is that when we want to try to club them up in vector addition method we will can club with the parallelogram law okay that is it otherwise we can study it separately and we can calculate the values so conceptually the initial velocity for a horizontal is the final velocity and if i study the vertical that initial velocity is vy0 final velocity may be something final uh, this is vy final that will be different and the as because it is going against the against the gravity what is the acceleration will be g for time t i am saving that if if it is the flight time is total time is t then v final velocity is the initial velocity minus g into t that will be the first equation for horizontal this is with the uh, vertical motion i am now 
vertical motion being started so horizontal motion is only one equation i will get there is no acceleration the second equation the displacement the displacement from this to this now if it is let's say the initial uh, the final is x final and let's say this also is not zero rather i will take the initial displacement this one <coughs> this is displacement is equal to what s is equal to vt so the the ultimate height that means this is the i am taking this also i am taking as x so x on y direction x y final x y zero the if it is not i am not considering this is the origin rather i can take from somewhere i am in case if it is zero then i'll put zero there is no harm in it but initially i want to take a generalized form so i'm taking the initial distance also some distance okay now x is equal to the displacement is vt now what is v r half into average velocity that means v y final plus v y initial whole divided by whole into t the distance is equal to the final distance is equal to initial distance plus that will be the initial distance if it is not the origin if it is origin then i will put zero just mind it plus half into uh, means average velocity into that time that will be the displacement after that after the initial displacement if it is considered to be the initial distance from the point of project then that will be considered then the average velocity into time it will be the final velocity this will be the second equation for horizontal motion now if i club it together if i club this together just like uh, the rectilinear motion or the motion we have already studied in kinematics this is just extension extension of that now if i put vf uh, oh sorry this will be the final i have taken it wrong what is the formula v is equal to u minus gt the same formula i am using here so this is the final velocity so now if i put either vy0 here in this equation then x y f will become x y0 plus half into v y f and v y0 can be written as v y f v y f plus g t into t so if i write it like that half into this will be 2 so this will nullify this will give v into y into f into t plus half into g into t square so this will be the another equation third equation out of this two or else if i put the t from here if i now calculate the t value from here t will be v y 0 minus v y f all divided by t now put the t value here so then this will become x y f is equal to x y 0 plus half into this into this instead of t i will put this value so this will be the v y square v y 0 square minus v y f square divided by g so now so now that x f x y f minus x y 0 into g Into two that will be equal to v y zero square v y f square. Okay, so 
वी वाई एफ स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू वी वाई इनिशियल स्क्वायर माइनस टू जी इंटू एक्स वाई फाइनल माइनस एक्स वाई सो दिस विल बी द इक्वेशन द थर्ड इक्वेशन थर्ड इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन इन केस ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट टाइप so this you can understand yourself also then you need not to follow my thing if you want to if you can try at home you can easily establish this equation only thing is that you have to take the uh, concept two motions are different when you will move the horizontal motion there is no vel change in velocity so the, that will move in the constant velocity as it is a constant velocity the distance moved by in the x direction now is that if it is x final is equal to x in that case what would be the uh, distance towards x f 0 plus that velocity that we are moving with whether you say the final uh, the vx now let me take this this is over in y direction now we'll talk about the distance traverse in x direction that also has to be established now in this case the distance moved this is vx 0 let's say this is vx final because both are same so that this distance if i take a reference this is x uh, x s the s initial to x x final so the difference between this x s Final minus x x zero or initial is equal to the velocity. Either you write v x zero or v x final into the time because time of uh, the maximum height achieved and the the time which is uh, reaching this distance will be same because total time of projectile will be considered. For both vertical and the horizontal motion, so time is the such variable which will be same for uh, hor uh, vertical as well as the horizontal motion. So for that, that is the only thing that will correlate in between. So this will be the equation. Either you consider because velocity is same, so either you consider initial velocity or final velocity, whatever you consider with time will give you the horizontal movement. So this is the equation for horizontal. So the first equation that. v x zero is equal to v x sorry v x final. This will be the first equation. This will be the second equation. The displacement. Okay, that means v v is equal to u uh, plus u t basically. Yeah, sorry. S is equal to v t. Sorry, x is equal to v into t. There is no velocity change. So displacement. Displacement is s is equal to v into t. This is the formula. Okay, so this is the end of the projectile. I don't think I need to calculate or solve any problem. Or anyhow, let me check if number two problem I can solve it for you. I need to have some smaller problems so that I can make it very easy for you. Okay, leave it for now. Uh, I will uh, I will see some problem if it is there somewhere. I will solve it for now. But I have end it end it here. And in the next uh, chapter, I will start with the problem solving in projectile first. One or two problem. Then after, I will move on to one subject of mathematics. So thank you for now. Good night.